citizens to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Supervisor Vecchio? Here. Councilman McCarthy? Here. Councilman Wareheim? Here. Councilman Creighton? Here. Councilman Malloy? Here. Okay. Um, sitting as a Board of Water Commissioners, uh, as for number one, a transfer of $1,393.16 and authorize the advertisement for a bid for water distribution supply material. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Did I say a water bid is advertise a bid, right? Yeah. It's, it's on, yeah. Anybody wish to be heard on water district matters? If not, I'll move to close that meeting. Second. We will convene. On the correspondence, we have a first reading for a parade walk for the Comac Coalition for Caring Parade Run Walk for Smithtown High School East. First reading. Anybody wish to be heard for or against? Okay, next resolution advertised for public hearing. Town board to authorize a clerk to advertise for public hearing to be held at 7 p.m. on May 23rd to consider the town's entry onto certain real property located at 436 Edgewood Avenue, Smithtown, reputedly owned by Church of the Gospel Ministry for the purpose of remediating and or removing the structures thereat which have been designated as unsafe in accordance with the unsafe building standards set forth in Chapter 112-25A. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. <coughs> Supervisor Vector? Yes. Town Board authorized the clerk to advertise for the following bids to be returned. Recycling containers on May 23rd. Uh, residential solid waste collection and disposal contract June 19, 2013. And residential solid waste collection and disposal June 19, 2013. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Those two bids are differentiated One areas 1 and 10 and areas 11 and 12. Town board to award the following bids and to authorize the purchase of associated goods or services, a bid for arts and crafts, a bid for sporting goods to Canon Sports, a bid for bailing wire to Accent Wire, a bid for mulch bags to Dyna Pack Corp. That's it. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Good. Town Board to authorize the town clerk to advertise for following request for proposal to be returned to the town of Smithtown Purchasing Department, 65 Maple Avenue, Smithtown, New York, until 4 p.m. on the dates indicated as for 3 ARP number 13-047, concession sales to town facilities, May 17, 2013, returnable. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vector? Yes. I have number four, the town board to author uh, town board to approve the following as per four A minutes approval, minutes April 9th, 2013, B amendment of resolution, C adoption of amendment chapter 323, transfer development rates, D adoption of amendment ch of chapter 322-8, use regulations. E, town attorney to retain the services of GMS appraisal services. F, authorize the town attorney to commence an action in the New York State Supreme Court seeking to permanently enjoin and restrain all rep reputed individuals and entity known or to be determined subsequent to the date hereof pursuant to attached schedule from operating in violation of the town code town of Smithtown for what is commonly known as 1 Lawrence Avenue, Kings Park, New York, extension of an agreement, highway department to purchase hot asphalt, I, Town of Smithtown to dedicate the Smithtown Highway Department building as the James E. Dowling Building and the Town Board to authorize school age child care staff. Councilman Loy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. <coughs> Supervisor Vicky? Yes. Make sure it's that's Lawrence Road. Lawrence Road on yes, it's one Lawrence Road now. Yeah. Yeah. Number five, the Town Board has to do study and deliberation of subject record to issue a sequel. Seek a negative declaration of determination of non significance in the following matters as per. Reason stated as per 5A and B of the printed agenda. Taco Bell of America and change your zone petition. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? 
Yes. Councilman McCarthy. Yes. Supervisor Vector. Yes. Item number six, the town board to authorize the acceptance of the following donations from Holy Mother Mary, Janice Clark, Liberty Co Coverage Corp, William and Lucille Tapp, as per the printed agenda. Councilman Malloy. Yes. Councilman Creighton. Yes. Councilman yes. Wareheim. Yes. Councilman McCarthy. Yes. Supervisor Vector. Yes. Number seven, the town board to authorize the control to execute the following as per seven A, B, C, and D, increase in revenue accounts and transfers. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. And number eight, the town board to approve settlement the following matters for recommendation of the town attorney as per eight A and B, $304.94 and $700. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Town board to authorize the release of the following as per 9A performance bond. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Frick? Yes. And the personnel, as per number 10, the town board to approve the following personnel matters as per 10A through J. Seasonal appointments, part-time appointments, seasonal appointments, return for medical leave of absence. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. I have four, um, four, amendment, uh, four resolutions that are not on the printed agenda. <coughs> amendment to the 2013 road program agreement with additional roads as per attachments. Funding available in, to, due to a 28% <coughs> increase with the New York State CHIPS program. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vector? Yes. Amendment to the Smithtown Landing Country Club Management Agreement with Michael Hebron to authorize a increase in the annual green fees scheduled by a dollar. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vector? Yes. Uh, New York, to approve the New York State Liquor Authority permit application by Foxy's Ice Cream and Snacks regarding special events at the Long Beach Concession and further authorize the supervisor to execute an agreement regarding said events. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. <coughs> Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? <coughs> yes. A town board to approve the settlement of the following. The estate of Ryan Colvin et al. against the town and the estate of Robert A. Ungara et al. against the town of Smithtown in a total amount $560,000. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vector? Yes. Okay, wishing to be heard, uh, John Schriefer? <coughs> Could you come up to the mic, Mr. Schriefer, please? Uh, basically, uh, we're, we're having the streets in our area being repaved, and they're doing a uh, partial job of the curbs. They're replacing half the curbs, or in some cases, a third of the curbs. And it it looks it, it looks like hell. I mean, uh, it every other area we, we've gone through where Smithtown has indeed replaced the streets, the streets in this case are 50 years old the curbs were replaced. In our area, what they're doing is they're partially replacing the curbs. Now, we took a pretty good hit at Sandy, and many of the curbs and many of the properties were pretty well hit. But there's no reason for the town to come in and do a partial job when they're repaving streets that are 50 years old. Now, I was told that basically the street system of Smithtown is approximately 550 miles, 560 miles. 470. 470. Right. All right, I'm sorry. Then I, I made a mistake. It's 470. At that rate, I was also told that they, they try to repair 20 miles <coughs> per year. But at that rate, every 25 years, our streets should be repaved. These streets were put in in 1962. I was there when they put them in. They have never been replaced. They have never been, they've been repaired for potholes, but they've 
nothing has ever been done to the streets themselves. And here we are 50 years later, and you're doing a partial job on the streets themselves. I mean, what does it take to get the streets repaved to where they originally were? To get well, may I answer that? Uh, yes. <coughs> another of your neighbors called regarding the curbing. Yes. He's repaving the street, correct? That I have no idea. Well, yeah, I haven't he, started. Well, he is. And I called the highway superintendent, and he said many of those complaints are cosmetic, that the old curb doesn't look like a new curb. That was his explanation. Well, what does that mean? I thought curb appeal means something when you sell no, a house. No, it means to me that he doesn't think the older curb, that the sections that weren't repaired need, don't need to be repaired. But what does it take to repair a curb? What is required for a curb to be repaired? Is I, it cracked? Does that... Does I, that I, I can't answer that question. It's under the domain of the highway superintendent. Okay. Well, for instance, in front of my house, the curb is cracked. Of okay. course, concrete does crack, and I'll grant you that. But there's no reason to take and replace part of the curb, which they did, and they didn't replace the other part. All it takes is one plow to hit that, that curb. It's going to take the curb out. It's also going to take the street in front of it. Now, the, the street hasn't been repaired yet, but I assume that you are replacing Have you spoken the to the highway well. superintendent yes, about I that? Yes, I have. And what was his explanation? The same explanation I just got from you. Right. In other words, none. We're not his boss. Excuse me? We are not his, we don't oversee what he does. Oh, no one does then. He's a highway superintendent. He's yeah. elected to do that. And th you, so homeowners have no recourse. Sure you do. You complain what is that? Him. I guess my time is up. No, it's all right. You can go on because I don't think you're satisfied. I'm not. The highway superintendent is a separate, separately elected person has jurisdiction over all roadways and roadways. And he told me the reason it wasn't done is because his budget didn't provide it. Well, that's his excuse. That was his excuse, yeah. yes. I'll be happy to show you his budget for the, for the well, street. The, if his, you know, who establishes his budget? Town board. And Based on what he provides for repair, and you just heard me read something that he just amended his road program Increase that budget by two hundred thousand dollars. He decides how that two hundred thousand will be spent. So he has control over his budget. That's correct. And the method in which his budget is spent. Correct. Okay. Well, that seems to be a bit of a problem since when I spoke to him about his budget, he stipulated that basically the budget was provided by the town board, and he had no control over how it was spent. Oh, okay. Well, it's his word against mine. I'm giving you my word. Okay. So, in other words, there, there was no recourse. The recourse is I don't think he's repaving your curb. <laughs> well, that's that's yeah, obvious. Right. Michelle Gary. Good afternoon. Um, I Could just wanted to. Yeah. Is this better? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to thank the board and Supervisor Vecchio and the town attorney for um, taking the initiative with uh, Jesco and the properties at One Lawrence Road. That's um, a big help for our cause, and we're really happy about that. Um, we would like to um, mentioned that there was a recent article in Newsday um, that kind of portrayed us in a negative light. Um, and I think, I'm not exactly sure how it, how it all transpired, but just to be clear, so you know where we're coming from in case you believe what you read in Newsday, um, we're not about shutting down the businesses um, over there. We're all about them complying with the code. So if the end result, if they can't comply, if that's the direction that the town goes in, and if they can't comply and then they go out of business as a result of that, that's not really on us. That's kind of on them. So um, we just wanted to state that we are not about shutting them down. We're not a bunch of crazies, um, you know, trying to shut down businesses. M most of the people that are involved in our task force are in business. They own their own businesses. So um, it's, it's not about that. Um, 
And that's basically all I wanted to say at this point. I appreciate it. Um, I hope that we're successful in Supreme Court, like we have been with KPE2. And you have our support in, you know, in this however we can, however we can help, and, and that's, um, that's what our mission is. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mary Ann Stevens. <coughs> Hi, I actually have two things. I have one prepared page of comments, brief, large type, <laughs> and um, I have one email that I received from one of our neighbors who couldn't be here today. He's also in the task force, and I thought it would be of interest to you regarding some activities this morning at KPE. Um, first of all, I I'd like to say I love Resolution 4F. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you for pursuing JESCO in Supreme Court. It's very heartening to see that you do appreciate that it's your duty to protect the general welfare by prosecuting those who violate our town code rather than favoring special interests that threaten the general welfare in the town. We're very pleased to see this being done with JESCO. Um, unfortunately, the atrocious state affairs that we have now in Old Northport Road areas is due to the fact that, that was not they were not the violators were not prosecuted in the past. And I'm very concerned by some recent comments specifically from Mr. Derubius and Mr. Zolo at the last uh, town board meeting. They apparently, they plan to circumvent rather than enforce the existing code. And uh, I see that as accommodating the scoff laws. It seems irrational and it violates the public trust. We moved here believing the zoning for residential and light industry. Allowing code changes to accommodate the scoff laws, it renders the code meaningless for the law abiding as, as protection that the town's supposed to be affording us. The plan, the, this new zoning plan seems to go in the entirely the wrong direction. And I'm hoping that the same respect that you've shown for the law and your sense of responsibility to the community that drove you to prosecute JESCO, I'm hoping that that will now drive you to respect and enforce the existing code, the code that you've been entrusted to uphold. The proposed new zoning, it looks to me as though it's simply a backdoor to allow outdoor storage. That's something that favors the offenders, and it can only continue to harm the general welfare of the town. And, and, it's be, and maybe on paper it doesn't seem that way, but the problem is the reality of outdoor storage along Old Northport Road is that it's, it's simply an outrageous euphemism for junkyard. Um, I have a picture here taken by a gentleman in our task force who's here, and this is and just comparing two aerial views. Uh, Jezco's unofficial junkyard on the top and Deer Park's official junkyard on the bottom. And you'd be really hard pressed to tell the two apart. Other businesses in the area, as you know, we have problems with garbage being stored outside, bales of, bales of recycled material, there's rock dust, mulch, litter, a lot of different problems that you guys know all about. Um, so I strongly encourage you to please apply that same sense of decency that brought us to this point with JESCO to the enforcement of the current code without tweaking for special effects. Um, and and I, as Ms. Gary, Ms. Gary said, I wanted to reiterate that the law-abiding residents of Kings Park, we most definitely want businesses to thrive here because we're certainly not interested in taking on all those property taxes all on our own. Um, and we are pro-business. But we do ask that businesses abide by the same town laws that we all live Mrs. by. Mrs. Stevens, I'm <laughs> going to interrupt you. Your time is up. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Stevens, I think somebody, I think it was Mrs. Gary who complimented the town attorney. Yes. And the board and all people involved in moving so forthrightly against. As, as I have Allow to, me to and I do want to stress Allow that. Me I to thank finish. you for that. And you see that there was an agenda item um, going to court on the JESCO properties. So we have not been inactive. Not at all. Okay. And I am, <coughs> I am pleased now, with that. Now, let me also finish. You talked about a new town code. We know one's being prepared. None of us really know what's in it. We haven't discussed it yet. It well, will be when it's finalized, and we will decide whether to implement that code or not. It's that simple. Okay, and, and to respond simply to what you have said, 
we do know a few things. The <coughs> kimono's been lifted a little bit, and we have seen repeated mention of outdoor storage. Okay. In fact, uh, several members of the town board have reiterated that we need outdoor storage. And as I've said, outdoor storage can, fun can seem innocuous. However, the reality of outdoor storage, I've shown you my photographs, well, my 60 photographs of outdoor storage. Mr. Stevens, can I make a suggestion, if yes. you don't mind? Um, when and if that um, ordinance is proposed, yes. there would be a public hearing, and certainly you could come and speak about any portion of it that you'd like. Thank you. And, and certainly, if outdoor storage and the kind of outdoor storage were, in, were included, then you could have your word then. Thanks, I'll appreciate okay? that. Thank you. Would it be all right if I briefly rattled through Mr. Chris Wilkes' email this morning regarding KPE? Well, why don't you give us a copy? We'll make copies of it and, and circulate it, okay? That's fine. That's fine. There's some excellent photos that he took this morning that pertain to it, and I printed those out. But you know, but in all fairness, I'm the one doing the talking. There's a situation here that you don't like and we don't like, and I think we're I, being. I think some dislike it more than others. And I, I think we are being like proactive, <laughs> and and you folks keep coming back, saying the same things over again. No, and then you haven't listened to me. Well, I have listened. I have. I do appreciate okay. what you've done. Okay. I'm a little concerned that some seem to be rather zealous about outdoors. Some okay. are more zealous so about you, outdoor storage. So once houses. again, if that is proposed, there has to be a public hearing. You can come and, and be heard. And I'll be there, and I okay. appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mark Mancini. You want to give that to me? Go. Thank you. He will circulate that. Thank you. Was that okay? Mm -hmm. Let's go Good evening, members of the board. Uh, I'm Mark Mancini, architect in town of Smithtown. Um, recently, I went to the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals uh, for the restaurant. As you know, I do a lot of restaurants in, uh, in town as well as Long Island. Um, this particular restaurant is located on a WSI zoning property. Uh, we've done restaurants on WSI zoning before, uh, but we came across something uh, this trip which was a little bit uh, different. We uh, attempted to do an outdoor seating area uh, with this restaurant, which we've done with many restaurants like Rigazzi and uh, you know, a few others in town. And um, you know, what we found and what we didn't really know that the WSI zoning, um, and it's a little bit quirky, but uh, I have here your uh, table 322-8B. And uh, if I could give this just copies to the board, I have highlighted the area. Um, normally, uh, if we have a restaurant in central business, for example, or neighborhood business, the restaurant, by special exception at the Board of Appeals, is allowed to have outdoor seating. Um, when it comes to WSI, if you'll notice, if you look at the highlighted area on this form that I gave you, you'll see that there's just a line where WSI is. In other words, there's no criteria or actually any way for the board to accept outdoor seating in the WSI zoning. Um, strangely enough, there are restaurants that have outdoor seating that were granted. Uh, this is something that's come to light rather recently, I think with the, uh, the Sonic uh, proposal that was done uh, last year. Um, also, just so the board knows, uh, Outdoor seating is allowed for restaurants that have waitress service or, you know, a full-scale restaurant. When it comes to things like uh, fast food uh, that have paper and everything, it, according to the zoning, court, the zoning code, you are not allowed to have outdoor seating because of the trash factor. Um, that's my understanding of the code anyway. Uh, you're not allowed to have outdoor seating for for instance like checkers I believe doesn't have it uh, McDonald's and those type of restaurants uh, when you have a counter serve restaurant such as Rigazzi uh, DiMaggio's you'll and even uh, Napa Tandy's down here in Smithtown you'll notice that they have outdoor seating and it works quite well uh, what I'm asking the board to do is to consider um, revising this code so that a special exception could be pursued in the WSI zoning and that it's equal. So in other words, if you have a restaurant on a WSI piece of property and you could potentially have uh, central business or neighborhood business right next door uh, having a restaurant, that they both have the ability to have outdoor seating. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Mr. Flynn is in the back. He noted that. 
Mrs. Fink, Mrs. Miss Fink. Hello. You can pull that down, ma'am. Pull that mic open. Yes. Okay. No, you're good. Okay. I, I'm here to appeal to you in general that you consider the residents of the town and not just the businesses that want to come. And I understand taxes and I understand revenue, but we're people and we live here. Uh, I understand that there is a push to reconsider the, what they consider, some people consider an aged zoning policy in respect to the outdoor dining. Ah. There is a difference between a central business corridor and the, other, and the WSIs. I know that you allowed outdoor seating at Ragazzi, and I think that was a mistake. It is problematic to the people who live there. It's not a benign thing. You, you stand there and you smell and you see and you hear. They got an exemption, they have it. Uh, Sonic wanted it, it would be a tremendous problem. I don't know exactly where they want to put it now, but please consider the people who live around any place where they want to change the zoning. I'm asking you just general. Uh, there was a comment made that um, if you can put a restaurant there, uh, if you're going to allow a restaurant, you should allow outdoor dining. That's ridiculous. There's a huge difference. That, that does, just doesn't make sense to do that. Um, as I said, Ragazzi was the problem. The other comment that was made is that people's opinions about what's needed change over time. And the codes might change also. I agree with that. I understand that. But your opinion also changes by where you live. And because codes are old doesn't mean that they're outdated, doesn't mean that people who live around those areas don't want to maintain the old code. There were reasons not to have traffic and smells and people and all kinds of things sitting out and dining near you. I don't know where they want to put it, but I saw this in the paper this morning and I said, just to change a regulation because it's old doesn't make sense. Please, Thank you. Please consider the people. Thank you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I'll move to close the meeting. Second. <coughs> Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. <coughs> Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Malloy? Yes. 